For part A, let's check out the definitions of continuity. These three things need to hold. <clears throat> so let's check the first one. The limit is x approaches 3 from the left. Uh, so that means we're going to be using this function because this is exactly 3 or any value to the left. Uh, and the number we get out there is x approaches 3. Uh, we get 3 plus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so let's check and see if that matches with the limit as we approach 3 from the right. So we're, if we're approaching this piecewise function from the right, that means we need to be using this because infinitely close values to 3 from the right, 3.00001, means we need to use this bottom function. So 5 minus 3 gives us 2. That part checks out. And then if you plug in exactly 3 into the function, it says this is inclusive up here. You'd plug 3 in there, you get out 2. So we'd say, yes, uh, it is. And your explanation should say, uh, because of the three conditions of... Uh, continuity at a point hold. The limit from the left, limit from the right, and then uh, uh, it exists, and then the function is, de is defined at exactly 3. So a reminder of average value. To find the average value in an integral, you uh, integrate from a to b of that integral, uh, and then multiply it by b minus a. Uh, 1 over b minus a, sorry. So this will, this will give you the average value. So uh, you know, it's discontinuous at x equals 3. Um, so we're going to need to break the integral up in two separate integrals. So here's what the full calculation should be in blue. Uh, it's b minus a there. And then I had to make two separate integrals to make this integration happen because it's a piecewise function. So if you take it by uh, piece by piece, so there's the two antiderivatives of each piece. And then you've got to evaluate those by plugging in the numbers. Uh, this first one, uh, if you plug in 3, you get 4 to the 3 halves, which is tough because this is a no calculator problem. So 4 to the 3 halves is the same thing as 4 squared over square root of 4. Because these bases are the same. This is 4 to the 1 half, 4 to the 2. So since the bases are the same, their powers would subtract. 2 subtracted by 1 half gives you 3 halves. So I've shown that this is equivalent to this. And we know what square root of 4 is. That's 2. And we know 4 squared is 16. 16 divided by 2 is going to give you an 8. And so we're supposed to subtract from that what happens when you plug in 0. I have plugged in 3. Now if I plug in 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 to the 3 halves is 1. Times 2 thirds is 2 thirds. So there's that anti, there's that integration in black. Uh, and then over here, uh, this one's pretty quick. You just got to plug in 5 and then subtract what happens when you plug in 3. So when you plug in 5 to this guy, um, it's pretty yucky. You get a bunch of fractions. Uh, so yeah, I guess cleaning up these fractions. I've simplified it to be this in red. Um, so continuing. Whoops, a uh, big mistake here. This is supposed to be all this multiplied by 1 over 5 because that was the the average value th that came the uh, thing that came out uh, at the beginning, b minus a down here. So, whoops, sorry, I just caught a problem with my arithmetic here. Multiplied by 2 over 3 twice here. This should have been a 1 inside here. Uh, so it changed this fraction and it changed this fraction. Everything else on the right side is okay. So with that correction on the fraction arithmetic, when you boil those down, that, that left side should have been 14 over 3, not 44 over 45, or 44 over 9 is what I had. Um, but with that correction, it should be 14 over 3. Uh, so when you add those two fractions together, you get 20 over 3. So that simplifies to be 4 thirds for your final answer. That's the average value. Okay, so now this last part. Uh, so different function g is defined like this, where k and m are just constants. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, something like that. Uh, not variables. If g is differentiable at x equals 3, what are the values of k and m? For g to be differentiable at x equals 3, it's got to have the same derivative if you approach 3 from the left and from the right. So let's take the derivative of this with respect to x. So there's our derivative in, in red. Because uh, though, oops, that should be negative 1 half here. Because the 1 half power comes down, and then it gets reduced by 1. 1, uh, one half minus 1 gives you negative 1 half. 
So there's the derivative of the bottom one, uh, the top one, and the derivative of the bottom one is just simply m, uh, because it's a linear function. Uh, so when you take the derivative with respect to x, the one comes down, turns to a zero. So uh, since it's supposed to be differentiable at this point, they should be equal to each other at this point, at, at x equals 3. So if you plug 3 into this guy, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 to the negative 1 half gives you 1 half. Because 4 to the negative 1 half is the same thing as 1 over square root of 4, square root of 4 is 2. So k over 2 times 1 half gives you k over 4. So we have this fact we're working with. If the differentiable uh, at the point x equals 3, you should be able to plug 3 into the top derivative and the bottom derivative, which there's no, no place to plug it in for x, but plug it into both, and they should be equal to each other. But we still can't solve. Two variables, one equation can't solve. However, differentiability implies continuity. So you know they have to be continuous at this point. So the limit from the left is x approaches 3. The limit from the right should equal each other. So let's plug 3 in black into the into the top and to the bottom. 2k is what I got for the top and then when I plug in 3 into the bottom I'm gonna get uh, 3m plus 2. And again if it's continuous at that point those must be equal to each other. So again two variables one equation can't solve but we can use this fact over here that m is k over 4 so plug that in here. 2k And you've got just a, a, a small little equation to solve. Subtract 3k over 4 from both sides. You get 1 and 1 fourth k equals 2. So k is going to be k is 8 over 5, and then plug that back in to find out what m is. Oops, you don't want to plug it in for m. Plug it back in to find out what m is.